I don't think she's harboring any mean feelings towards you at all. Rory, but do you understand the shit I went through? I couldn't get bricked for two years, dog. Two. I was contemplating just sucking some shit just because. All right, so I've been sleeping on Wushoku season two, part two, partly because I just haven't really had the most time to like get invested into the show because when it dropped, I was watching X-Men, I was watching Fearin, I was watching, I think Kaiju came out at the same time. And it's just, I didn't have really enough time to like watch it week by week and then do like the three episode videos that I wanted to do. So I figured since I saw they were, I guess, transitioning to the second part of this second part with a different arc, this would be the, the appropriate time to talk about the first half. And just to recap, I guess, the last part of season two for me, it was enjoyable, I guess you could say in a wholesome way, but like in a real way. As I said before, there were a lot of themes that related to real life, especially with the ED shit. That was very interesting to me. You know, he's a grown ass nigga and he's like in the body of the 16 year old, I get it. But it's like the story in itself is like basically him reliving life. I'm not saying the life he was living before was right, and I'm not saying some of the shit he does now is right, because some of the shit he does now is foul. But, as I said, probably in every Mushoku video I've made, when you put that shit to the side, this story is really good. And that's mainly what this season has been. It's been strictly world building, like there's been little to no combat. And the same thing applies to these first six episodes. And I'll get into the specifics, but if you haven't seen Mushoku season two, part two, the first six episodes of it, then I'll click off this video and then go come back after you finish. And yeah, and we see right off the bat that this newly married man still has a shrine dedicated in his room to another woman's underwear. So I mean, in my head, that's cheating already. I don't know, <laughs> like, <laughs> because I'm thinking about it in my, if that was happening to me, if I had a girlfriend and I'm not gonna say it's an ex's pair of underwear, an influential man in her life, and she has a shrine dedicated to his Hanes underwear or Fruit of the Loom, whichever you prefer. I hope they're not those loosey goosey shits though because typically those reek i don't know like if, you, if you're rocking those i'm sorry i'm sorry you gotta wear like the nice breeze but that's besides the point i think i'm breaking up with her and not only am i breaking up with her i might have to track the man down who she's praying to because what what does he have that i don't why aren't you praying to my underwear if i'm the one that's supposed to be giving you this action on a nightly basis you know that's just my thought process with it but enough about me but my friend wasn't lying when he um said this shit started slow because it definitely did and it's not like it was slow in a bad way but like i thought once they were house hunting and came across the dead of the night map from black ops 4 and they were talking about renovating it as a place for rudius and sylvie to stay to be honest i thought that's what like the first three episodes of the ship was gonna be like i i'm happy that this the house part was a one episode thing because i thought they were gonna have to get like the property brothers involved and all that stuff but apparently this house was like haunted so then they were coming to exercise the demons and then long story short in the middle of the night they're camping out for it and then it ends up being like sorcery's puppet or some shit from naruto instead of an actual demon and the reason why people thought it was a ghost because it had like incantations and shit that like no one really knew of like the magic that was embedded in this thing to allow it to move and stuff like that i don't know if it didn't exist like in the present day or if it was some like ancient magic but no one even knew like what the shit was and of course the figurine freak wants to take on the duty of like figuring out how they even work himself so i have plans in my head right now that i cannot share with you in full detail because the haters they will sabotage me and they will ruin this for not only me but for everyone and this is some revolutionary shit that i've got on my mind right now so you just got to give me the opportunity to take the lead in this research and let me do what i do this is generational shit i'm thinking of right now in my head and i'm gonna just give you one word fornication that's it that's all i'm gonna say that's all I'm gonna say. But Zenobi, you don't even have mana like that. And like, you don't even know what you're doing low key. Ain't that right, Rudy? Like, so like, how do, how do you even think you're gonna get to such a grand scale? Like, what if the shit goes berserk? That won't be a problem for me. You saw how I handled this shit back at the Haunted Mansion. Master, I'm gonna say it again, please. We may never have to work a nine to five again, Master, please. Please, nigga, please. All right, Zenobi, I leave this shit to you. I don't know what it entails. And I'm honestly kind of scared. Yeah, no, so his plan is to mass produce sex robots, something like that. And I won't lie, like for Rudeus, being the type of dude he was in his first life, great husband. I'll give him that, great husband. Like if he wanted to, he would. All right, that's all I'm saying. The ladies say it all the time, if he wanted to, he would. And after that, like Rudy and Sophie are just going through, I guess the trials and tribulations of getting married and like the doubts and whatever. And Sophie's like, I don't know if I'm worthy. And Rudy's like, no, you're like perfect all that stuff and episode two was solid because there was actually a surprise in action scene 
because Sylvie and Rudy's were shopping and she was getting them some new drip and they were in some designer shit. This was like, this was nice. Like this, this hoodie with the drawstrings, I don't even know what type of rope, whatever this is. If this was in like a different color, I may need to get one of these. This was nice. I think, I think they should have asked for more colors in this one. What she ended up getting him was like a little basic, but it was still clean nonetheless. But the main point of this episode was them throwing a little housewoman party and inviting all their friends. And it's like, the thing I really liked about this portion of the season, is like, it felt fast in terms of how quickly everyone built relations with each other, but it made sense to where it like, I feel like it cut out unnecessary information that would have made the show feel a bit slower, if that makes sense. Because it's like everyone in this room where the season took a break, it's like no one was really close like that. You know, it's like Rudy is like just met Nana Hoshi, just met Machamp, and like him and Cliff were like just getting on the good terms from what I remember. And then just seeing everyone here, it like shows that some time has passed and like they've just grown to like all become friends and like, which I thought was good to see because I felt like even though it would have been nice to see some of the development for the sake of this story, cutting that out was not that bad of an idea. <clears throat> all right. Uh, good evening, friends. I just want to thank you all for coming here today to celebrate the conjoining of me and my beautiful, lovely wife, Sylphiette. What are they wincing at? Did I say something wrong? I'm confused. There's no need to be so formal, motherfucker. Just say it how it is. Say it with your chest. We're here to party, nigga. Say that shit. Yeah, no, this bitch ass nigga is right. We're getting married. We're having children. I appreciate all y'all boys, all y'all girls for pulling up tonight. And I mean, let's turn up type shit. You know what I'm saying? Let's turn this shit on. And lukewarm really got me here. Right after Rudeus' TED talk, his little speech, party goes on. They're having a great time. Lukewarm pulls up. Yeah, I know we've had our differences, cuz, but I just hope we can get along moving forward. And I mean, we're family. Let's just grow. Let's grow together and let's be family like we're supposed to be. I feel the same way. Why would we fight? Especially with these great people we have surrounding us. We can't be button heads. And it's like we find out Elena's selfies, grandmother, whatever. I'm not even worried about that. Not even like 10 minutes later. Rudy, I know this may be inappropriate of me to ask, especially on your home turf. But maybe it's not since you'd have home court advantage in this case. But um, I'm going to need you to fight lukewarm right here, right now. Friendly fade. Friendly fade. Just fight him. No magic, though. None of that. Like, swords. Why would I do this? Me and him just shook hands. Like, we're, we're straight. Like, he's lukewarm and I'm cold Rudy. Like, that's, that's like how we're, like, rocking this shit now. You know, we're walking. Like, this is. No, you don't have to accept this. You don't. Like, if you want to be a bitch, that's fine. You can refuse. And I'm not forcing this upon you. But I'm just asking it of you. Hey, cuz, square the fuck up, bitch. Not on my doorstep. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I invite you to my house, and after everything we've been through, you're asking to fight me on my front porch? Rudy took too long to say yes. Even if I'm slightly intoxicated, we are going at it in that snow. And the animation for this was fucking clean, number one. And Rudy blitzes the nigga. And the choreography was actually so nice. And I just, I can't wait till they actually start fighting because this show, like, really gets clean with the animation. And Rudy, like, two shots and breaks his hand. I told you, bro, this is what I do. Like, I don't understand this change of heart, but I really feel disrespected that you shook hands with me earlier and now you're trying to shake swords with me. And how about you just make it shake right now and get the fuck off my lawn? Rudy, it was a joke. I'm I'm kidding. It was a joke. I just wanted you to take good care of Sophie. That's it. Yeah, and episode three is where we got to see a generational crash out in Nana Hoshi. Didn't expect this from her at all. This was worse than when Sylphie crashed out on her in, in the first half, for sure. This shit just seemed unwarranted. Not really, but at the same time, it kind of did. She's still tr trying to figure out how to transfigure stuff on some, like, full metal alchemist ship from Japan to this world. And I mean, I think I would destroy everything that I've worked so hard for, too, if I dropped this elaborate circle and then it just fucks up. And after I saw the paper rip, I, t I really... I did. I didn't expect her to start tweaking out like she did, genuinely. Now she actually started tweaking. <laughs> like she, got, she got corrupted or something. Now that I'm listening to what she was saying, though, it's understandable because she got transported to a fantasy world and she just wants to go back and see her family and friends. And this episode was nice because everyone kind of just banded together. But I will say Cliff has been like an MVP of these first couple episodes. Like slice of life MVP. He's just like a good guy. What the fuck? This shit is not working. Girl, step aside. Let me work my magic real quick. Peep this. Wait a second. That's like kind of smart. What? Of course that shit is. Girl, I'm a genius. This is just what I do. Like I'm very fluent in Pythagorean theorem. Basically my second language. A squared plus B squared equals C. This is the answer. Look at it. And I'm still really impressed on how Cliff bagged this cougar. 
Elenace. He really is an MVP caliber player, but he's not like a LeBron James of this world. Like the type of shit he's doing is very like, it's like some Kyrie Irving on the Maverick type of stuff, you know, because Rudius would obviously be like a Luka since he's skilled in like every facet. The fact that he made Elenace deviate from her old ways of scandalism, and he's as smart as he is and as good of a friend as he is, he's a great partner in crime to have. They're eventually able to transfigure a plastic bottle into the world. So I don't know how, I don't know if this is gonna get any deeper than Nana Hoshi eventually just being able to transfigure herself back, or maybe she'll get to the point where she doesn't even wanna go back. That may also happen, and she like likes this world more, I don't know. And I feel like that's what makes this show so interesting with that, at least from the isekai I've seen, because I don't recall like ReZero and Slime and Shield Hero really getting involved with their real world shit, do they? Like ever? Like I feel like Rudeus's past life in the real world is very involved in this story, almost like not too much, but I don't know. Like it seems, it seems like a weird amount. And for me, I'd say my favorite part of maybe even this whole season, the ED stuff was interesting, but I, I know my favorite part of this little bunch of episodes right now was when his sisters got introduced because it added an element of like, I don't know if the words like humanism, I don't know, but it, it felt like a very real like brother sister bond and like Rudius going through his trauma and not on some like weird shit, like actually like looking out for his siblings in this world. It's something that I really did appreciate from his character because we see his sisters and they pull up because I guess his dad and Roxy and them are going to save his mom. And that was courtesy of Rui Jerd. It was nice seeing him again. We haven't seen him in like, it's been a while. They were just having a nice little conversation, catching up. Yeah, no Rui, she just left me high and dry. All she left me was her hair. Like, what does that shit even mean? Did she want me to give that shit to you because you needed her side? Like, I don't, did she know me and you would meet again? And I'm sorry if that was her plan because I burned that shit. I had to let that girl go. Now I'm happy though. I am, I'm happy and like I'm in a loving up and coming marriage, like shit's been good. You know, fuck that. Like I don't even want to call her like a name, but I'm like about to. For sure, it's on the tip of my tongue and I'm not Rudy. Um, I think you're misinterpreting the way she's going about it and I'm sure there's no bad blood between you two and i'm sure if she pulled up in this room right now it would be on some like reunion type of stuff like they're i don't think she's harboring any mean feelings towards you at all marie but do you understand the shit i went through i couldn't get bricked for two years dog two i was contemplating just sucking some shit just because that's the type of confusion she caused me these feelings that you have you gotta just leave in the past and if you two meet again just hear her out be calm about it and if i see her i'll let her know that i saw you and maybe we could have a reunion and yeah and i also saw your girl roxy her racist ass i, I took off my headband and she was like shaking and trembling in fear that shit caught me off guard but me and her are cool now too and Rui jerd was getting ready to leave and he was squaring up with my champ outside and i thought it was about to get bloody the way he was looking down on him he was about to stain his uniform and everything guys what's going on what's going on i should smack that shiny ass cranium of yours bitch ass nigga i'll refrain though it's straight what the hell was that Ruijer, those are fighting words. I mean, are you just gonna take that? Like, Rudy, I told you, like, maturity. I'm a changed man. I have no intention of fighting that bum. You know, it's like, he has four arms and I'm still working his ass in a fight. And just seeing how, like, the maid's daughter, who's Rudy's half-sister, like, really took a liking to him. And I think early on, like, he had a good relationship with her. Just a good kid overall. And then his blood sister, Norn, just really like was afraid of the nigga because of what he did to his dad when he was beating his ass. And not only seeing how it really affected her, but just seeing how like throughout the duration of this episode and the next, like she is progressively getting worse and deeper into like a hole. And she asked to go live in the dorms at the school. We see glimpses of her like in school and like she's really not fitting in. And she's kind of just keeping to herself. And we like come to find out that Rudius is having like flashbacks to how he was a shut in and stuff like that and then in the midst of that these two henchmen the cat girls ended up going on some like panty raid and just snatching these shits from everyone in the girls dorm and giving it to him in a bag and i don't know what type of horny shit they were on but that's besides the point we have more important matters to handle episode five starts with him storming off into a classroom because he thinks she's getting bullied pardon me so as you all can see because i know no one's blind in here there's a student missing from this class and that student happens to be my little sister I haven't heard anything from her regarding this, so I'm just taking matters into my own hands. I'm gonna keep it cut and clear and simple. I think someone in here is bullying her. And I'm not pointing to you right there, the guy with the antlers who looks like he should be out in the field frolicking around and not in this class. 
but I mean, you look suspicious off the bat. But let me not just put all my attention on you. Let me really try to be fair to everyone here. Because from my experience, there are many reasons not to come to class. And I feel like someone in this room is responsible for that. I think someone in here has done something. If any of you reveal yourself now, I will not get angry. I promise you. And also keep in mind, I'm like at the top of the, like I'm at the pinnacle, the apex of this academy. I am our most gifted student. So I could get you sent the fuck home tonight. Not even tonight. Right after you walk, I'm going to let you finish this class. Because you need all the education you can get because you will not be attending this school anymore. I could do that. That's if you're a liar, though. So I'm just I'm just I just want y'all to tell the truth. I won't get mad and we could settle this like adults. I'm lying right through my teeth right now. When someone steps up, I'm stepping up and swinging on them. If it's that antler nigga, I'm ripping those shits out of his scalp. And then everyone starts speaking up about how they mentioned Rudius's name and she would kind of like wince at it and cringe and like get upset and start to cry and shit like that. And this kind of started turning into like a pretty deep message kind of you know in terms of Rudius's character and his development and the development of his sister as well because she was experiencing damn near the same things he was experiencing in his first life and seeing them go back and forth from like where he's at now to like the flashbacks of him and his brother trying to speak to him and not being able to get through to him and him not wanting to let his sister fall into that same abyss it was very like wholesome and at the same time as she's coming to the realization that like at the end of the day he wouldn't hurt her or hurt his dad again as they're both like reflecting simultaneously it was very beautiful to see because we see like all of the shit she's been going through and she's been having like panic attacks and just like constantly hearing his name and hearing people talk about him and i'm sure she was like conflicted because what she knows of him is like he's a bad person and she's like scared and she has like a hate towards him but then everyone's talking so highly of him and it's just leading her into a feedback loop of like overthinking and anxiety and everything. And they did a really good job at representing that. And when she does the curtain, it's like his dad for a second, and then she blinks and it's him. Oh my gosh, that shit was so fucking beautiful, man. It, like this was a really well put together episode. Like this was genuinely like, I don't know if this is considered world building, I don't know, but this was just good. This was just good content. And she just starts crying. And then we see her the next day and she's like a lot more lively saying good morning to him and everything like that. And then the last episode up until this point, episode six, is where it's now going to transition, I think, from this school arc into more so of like the Mushoku that we grew to like in season one. And I'm not going to lie to you, assuming that this is the end of the school part, I feel like especially if it was like if I watched it in one fell swoop from like the beginning of season two up until now, I really appreciate it. You know, it's like we learn a lot and have learned a lot about Rudius's character a bit more in the direction I feel like he's going as an individual. And not only that, it's just like seeing the relationships that he's made and how he's like learned how to appreciate and cherish them a little bit more has been something that has been nice to see as well. Because it's like, obviously he still has his like criminal shit that he's got going on. And it's like that, again, the development in his character now does not excuse any of the fucking felons he's committed in his first life and in this world due to like his mental age and shit like that and that's not what i'm saying and like that's one thing that really at the end of the day is gonna suck for this series i feel like when it's all said and done because i've seen people talk about like how the author just kind of like unnecessarily like inserts i don't know if it's his own fantasies into the ship just some weird shit that kind of like tarnishes rudius's character i don't know but one of the main shits of episode six was the fact that sylphie got pregnant and now he's like in a big conflict because as she gets pregnant, he also gets called out to go save his mom. Now he has a dilemma and I'm really trying to form it into words, right? Because it's like this nigga does not deserve anything good. But seeing him get as emotional as he did about like Sylphie being pregnant and like him starting a family and stuff like that, like it seems like he has like values and like not bad ones. like. It seems like they're there, especially as the story goes on and at least they're developing. So it's just such a hard thing to like gauge, especially when you see him talking to the God, the man God thing. And he's like, you see him in his naked 40 year old body completely throws me off. And I'm just like, damn, like this really is what this nigga like is. And it just, it sucks. I'm not going to lie. Like it sucks. And it pisses me off a little bit because I'm like, damn, See, so ends up deciding he's going to go. Sylphie says she's going to be fine. And the reason why he decides he's going to go is because Norn walks out onto the front porch. Uh, Kyrie Irving, I guess, got her. And then she fucking breaks her ankle on the second step. And I did chuckle at this a little bit because 
the way it happened was a little ridiculous. <laughs> She's kind of scolding him like, why don't you go save him? Like dad's in danger, mom's in danger. Like you're strong. You're the best person for the job. What's up with you? Like that's not the brother that I just made up with two days ago. And he was like, sis, you're right. I'm gonna go get to it and I'm gonna head out. And that's how that arc ends, I'm assuming. I don't know. I really enjoyed those six episodes. Like the slice of life part of it. Like I feel like we got a bunch of character development from a couple people and a lot of good themes and symbolic shit and just like the normal shit that we've been getting from Mushoku honestly and just life lessons and again it just like kind of sucks when you like just remember how like what's going on exactly but at the same time it's like he is that man but he isn't Ugh, I don't know it's it's it's, it's really I'm not even gonna get too deep into it because there's no point it's like you go in circles it's like you either watch the show or you don't that's about it but um i'll give these first six episodes a solid seven and a half it's good and i, I definitely like those last three like i really enjoyed the whole sister thing he had going on and how he was like standing up for her and everything based off of what he experienced in life i did feel like it moved a bit fast at times and not necessarily that it was bad but just just that some content was being like skipped over you know because everyone was so like tight out of nowhere in terms of their relationships and stuff like that um, but those last three episodes were definitely very good. I liked those a lot. I don't know, just judging off of that little sword fight scene though, I'm sure the animation is gonna be phenomenal and crisp when this new arc starts to get animated and they go after his mom and they actually are fighting and shit like that. And I'm excited to see Rox. You know, that'll be interesting to see their little relationship since that's basically his religion. So, um, I don't know. But no, so that's it for right now. I don't know what video I'm gonna do next in terms of reviews. I'm gonna think about it and then I'll either make a post about it or maybe just post it. I don't know. But that's all I got for now. And if you stay till the end of the video, I appreciate you for watching. And without further ado, on to the next one. And yeah, that's it.